Nebraska State Patrol says two people died and several children were injured in a head-on collision Friday night in Sioux County. KDB.TV News starts right now. From your trusted source for news in western Nebraska and eastern Wyoming, this is KNEB.TV News. Presented by Platte Valley Companies, premier provider of financial services. Hello, I'm Ryan Murphy. This is KNEB.TV News, powered by Platte Valley Companies. Thanks for joining me. In our top story, NSP officials say at approximately 725 Friday, a westbound pickup pulling a loaded livestock trailer collided head-on with an eastbound pickup, which was also pulling a loaded livestock trailer at the mile marker 14 on Highway 20 east of Harrison. The westbound vehicle was driven by 67-year-old Ruth Smathers of Lost Springs, Wyoming, while the eastbound vehicle was driven by 42-year-old Nana Flesh of Shelby, Montana. Both drivers were pronounced deceased at the scene. Flesh's three children were also in the vehicle and sustained serious injuries. One child was ejected from the vehicle, flown to Regional West Hospital in Scottsbluff, and then transferred to a hospital in Denver. The other children were transported to the hospital in Chadron, and one has since been transported to a hospital in Rapid City. Several animals also died as a result of the crash. Well, Prime Metal Products is looking to boost their two-year-old operation in gearing with a more than $5 million expansion project that would add 40,000 square feet of space and 40 new jobs. Company President Herb Gibson went before the Scottsdale LB840 Application Review Committee last week to discuss an application for a $1 million loan towards the project, part of which could be forgivable. Earlier this year, Gearing City officials were told that the company had reached all of their goals for a $1 million state community development block grant coordinated through that city, and half of that figure has been forgiven. Gibson tells KDB News he believes the company is well positioned for future growth. We're just scratching the surface that we we have uh, we've picked the market correctly. We're in a good location. We've got labor where other people don't, and and that excites me from the standpoint of what we're going to be able to accomplish. We in partnership with our labor force. The application review committee voted to give a positive recommendation to the company's application which will now go, now go before the Scottsbluff City Council. We'll have more news right after this. The journey of a dream becoming reality. When we're young, a dream develops into a passion. That passion continues to manifest and grows as you do. It becomes all you want to do and all you want to be. It gives you direction. It drives you. Then your dream has become a reality. When that dream is ready to be reality, Platte Valley Bank will be with you every step of the way. One of my big responsibilities is making runs of Riyadh. I put all of my love into making ranch because it is the best by far. What are you doing if you don't get ranch? Gearing man is facing two felony counts of distribution of methamphetamine following a series of controlled drug buys conducted by the Wing Drug Task Force last year. 38-year-old Santos Gutierrez was arrested Wednesday at his home. Court documents say investigators saw Gutierrez selling meth to CIs working with the Wing Drug Task Force in June and August of 2021, involving a total of nearly a gram. Gutierrez made an initial appearance in Scottsdale County Court on Friday with a preliminary hearing set for Tuesday. Bond is set at $100,000 at 10%. Well, a plan to spend roughly $1 billion in federal pandemic cash has won initial approval from state lawmakers despite squabbles over specific projects. 
Appropriations Committee Chair John Stinner of Gehring said it was a detailed process for the committee to determine what was going to go to the floor. As you looked at what we had in front of us, we knew we had about $4 billion in requests. We knew we had to cut it down to a $1 billion. We knew that there is a, this is a short session. So that was, there was a way that we had, a process that we needed to have. I already indicated that it was helpful that uh, everybody filled out the guideline sheet so that we knew it was in compliance. We knew what the program was about. We knew um, that, that we could process their request. The package would pour millions of dollars into job training programs, housing grants, food pantries, meat processors, a new law enforcement training center, and dozens of other projects throughout the state. The federal money was designated to help states and local governments counter the effects of the coronavirus pandemic. And U.S. Representative Jeff Fortenberry of Nebraska says he will resign from office effective March 31st after a California jury convicted him of lying to federal authorities about an illegal campaign donation from a foreign national. Fortenberry's Saturday announcement follows concerted pressure on him to step down from political leaders in Nebraska and D.C. House Speaker Nancy Pelosi and House Minority Leader Kevin McCarthy on Friday urged Fortenberry to resign, while Nebraska Governor Pete Ricketts said Fortenberry should, quote, do the right thing for his constituents. That would be leaving office, the one he has held since 2005. Well, coming up for the break, Bill Boyer in with your full week weather forecast here on KNEB.TV News. It doubles every two minutes. How long? Hey, Dad. We're going for a run. Okay. Uh, you're going to go together? That's what we means. Okay. Uh, well, just be careful. Make sure you're not running alone. Stay on the sidewalk. Watch for cars. Don't talk to strangers. Another virus was blocked? What are you doing? Are you listening to me? All right? Because when it comes to safety, nobody knows safety better than me. Be careful out there. Are you doing an online quiz? Yeah. This one's going to tell me my IQ, which I've always wanted to know, because it's a mystery. I'm guessing it's very low, because all these quizzes are for us to get your passwords for everything. Oh, is that right? How do you not know that? How do you know that? How long have you been doing these quizzes for? How old are you? 11. 11 years. How do you not know how old I am? Because that's a long time, 11 years, to remember stuff. All right, well, we're going to go for a run and watch for cars and strangers, and you change all your passwords so your identity isn't wiped out. A bit dramatic. It's been said many times that life is what happens to you while you're busy making other plans. Have you been making plans to invest in new windows? Renewal by Anderson makes the best windows. It's that simple. And right now, Renewal by Anderson has an incredible financing offer. No money down, no interest, no payments for one full year, no payments for a year. Book your free estimate right now at rbawyoming.com. And remember, Life is what happens to you while you're busy making other plans. This is KNEB.TV weather from the KNEB Storm Center, your trusted source for weather. Well, for the first time in a while, we get to talk about some rain coming to the area. We'll start with partly cloudy skies this evening. Those will turn overcast by sunrise tomorrow, and it's going to be a cooler rainy day tomorrow. It's going to be windy as well right on into Wednesday and cool conditions on Wednesday. A little bit warmer Thursday. And next system arrives late Friday with temps really when you average everything out going to be about normal as we go through the whole week. A couple of days above, a couple of days below. 66 yesterday. We flirted with those record highs today. As we look at the rain gauge, we've now fallen below for the month and uh, still about 15 hundredths of an inch above normal for the year. Temperatures very warm. Notice uh, the contrast across the state. We have 70s and 80s here in western Nebraska. It's 50s and even some 40s in eastern portions of the state. 69 right now in Cheyenne. It is 65 in Mullen. 80 right now in Chadron. Winds are out of the west-southwest. We're going to call them 10 to 15, occasionally gusting to 20 to 25 miles an hour. Nothing really to worry about uh, out there at all. Let's take a look at our bus stop forecast. When you get on the bus in the morning, we'll be dealing with mostly cloudy skies and temperatures into the mid-40s on the way home. Rain developing, probably a, a steady rain as well, and temperatures into the mid-50s. Let's take a look at future casts then. For tonight, we're going to see just an increase in clouds as we go through the evening hours. Rain showers should stay off to our west overnight tonight. 
we're going to see uh, temperatures overnight fall down into the 40s. It's going to be a mild evening, all things considered. Now, tomorrow, we start the day with some clouds around here. Notice what happens as we go through the morning hours. We get closer to uh, mid to late morning. By 9, 10 o'clock, we start to see rain fill into the region. By lunchtime, we're going to see even more rain out there, and it's going to be a steady soaking rain through the afternoon into the evening hours, and things push off to the east. You'll notice a brief period of snow there as well. Can't rule out some wet snowflakes. Uh, any accumulations of snow going to be minor, as we're going to see temps back to near 60 for many of us before that rain gets here. Generally speaking, we're looking at a widespread rain of a tenth to a quarter of an inch. I think we'll cover almost everybody out of this system, a few areas not quite as much. And again, snowfall going to be limited in our vicinity. Not the case, though, off to our south and east. You get areas uh, around uh, uh, the high country. They're going to be dealing with several inches of snow in their area. Tonight, partly cloudy early, mostly cloudy late. Those winds out of the south-southeast will switch around to the north-northwest. Tomorrow, we're going to be dealing with rain showers in the morning, becoming a steady soaking rain by afternoon. It's going to be windy as well. Temperatures into the near 60-degree range. Winds, though, gusting over 45 miles an hour. It'll stay windy and quite cool into uh, Wednesday. Highs only in the mid-40s. We rebound into the low 60s Thursday. Another little system comes through Friday, drops us down closer to 50. And then the weekend, 60s on Saturday, back into the 50s Sunday, Monday, and some slight chances of precip there again. All in all, uh, kind of an average week when you go through things. Uh, some small systems, quick-moving systems, bringing us at least some chances for moisture. Are you looking for the perfect place to hold a wedding, family reunion, holiday office party, or business meeting? Well, look no further. The Hampton Inn and Suites Hotel and Conference Center is just the place for you. We're a full-service banquet facility that can host up to 400 of your guests. Stop in and see our spacious open concept meeting rooms and begin planning your special event or family gathering today. Let us do the work for you so you can enjoy your guests. For personal service, stop by the Hampton Inn and Suites front desk. This is John. He's not an actor or a director, can you tell? He calls himself a steward of the land. And by the looks of the way he nurtures his little corner of the earth, it's safe to say he's the real deal. John runs with us on a John Deere 3 Series tractor because you can never underestimate the value of a little tractor time. Nothing runs like a deer. Visit 21st Century Equipment in Alliance, Torrington, Scottsbluff, and Bridgeport, or visit 21stCenturyEquipment.com. Small Bank. Time to recap things from the sports side of things as we open up a brand new work week. The WNCC softball team played their first home games of the season over the weekend at Volunteer Field, splitting their four-game series with Trinidad State. In the split yesterday, it was a huge game at the plate for Victoria Wharton. She finished a perfect 7-for-7 seven seven with a home run included. Cougar softball will be back out on the road this upcoming weekend with games at Otero. The baseball team's weekend was a bit rough on the road for the Cougars. They dropped all four of their Region 9 conference games at Trinidad to fall to 5-8 in league play. In the 6-5 and 10-4 losses yesterday, the Cougars did combine to hit four home runs. They'll look to get right at home at Cleveland Field this upcoming weekend as they welcome in Lamar Community College. On the prep schedule today, there's doubleheader soccer for Scotts Bluff at home with the girls and boys teams entertaining North Platte. The Scotts Bluff boys off a 5-1 loss to Omaha South. Not bad, they're the defending Class A champs. That match was on Saturday. The Scotts Bluff boys 1-1. One one. The Bearcat girls are 1-0 oh after a blowout win over Sterling to open their season. Both gearing teams will be in action tomorrow 
with the girls at Torrington, the boys hosting the Trailblazers. And there were three track and field meets of note over the weekend. The Benfield invite here in Scotts Bluff, the early bird meet at Morrill, and the John Ganser at Sydney. You can link to all those meet results and finishes with the high school sports weekend recap story on the website. Plus, last Friday, it was the Scotts Bluff boys golf team taking the top spot at the North Platte Invitational. That will do it for today. That is the latest from right here at the FNBO Sports Desk. I'm Chris Cottrell. When you call Gearing Valley Plumbing and Heating, you will have options. Repair it, rebuild it, or update it. Whether your furnace stops working or your bathtub won't drain, Gearing Valley Plumbing and Heating provides the services you need to be comfortable. Weekends, holidays, or late nights, we will be there. With over 30 years of service, our certified technicians and cutting-edge technology can keep your systems running at their peak efficiency. Gearing Valley Plumbing and Heating, every time we enter your home, we leave it a better place to live. Let's take a look what's happening on today's community calendar. The Community Calendar is brought to you by Riverstone Bank. First State Bank is now Riverstone Bank. Community strong with the same people you know and trust. What a year 2020 was. Now's the time to get out and travel this summer to see family and friends you were not able to see this last year. Spend more time enjoying your trip by flying United Airlines, operated by SkyWest with daily flights to and from Denver. Reserve your flight today and remember United Miles can be earned and redeemed with your flights. While at the airport, stop and enjoy authentic Italian food at Roma Italian Restaurant. And don't forget, Thrifty Car Rental is here for your car rental needs. Make life easier, relax, and hitch a ride with your BFF, Western Nebraska Regional Airport. Swipe right, swipe left, endlessly searching. Finding the perfect match isn't always perfect, but it can be when it comes to finances. Nora found the perfect business loan. Jenny opened her first savings account. Grammy loves her checking account. We found a match for Wilson Farms. The Sandersons were matched with a mortgage. Regardless of your financial situation, Platte Valley Bank will match you with the perfect solution. Find your match at Platte Valley Bank. And finally tonight, for 50 years, the WNCC Foundation has been helping students with scholarships and other foundations to continue their education. And last week, a gala celebration was held to keep the foundation going for another 50 years. On Thursday at the Gearing Civic Center, several hundred were on hand to help raise additional funding and were treated to live music, a silent auction, and great speakers. WNCC Interim President John Marin explained the importance of the foundation. 
The WNCC Foundation for 50 years supported facilities, equipment, and of course the students in a way the college could have not, could not have done on their own. The keynote speaker for this year's gala was Lucas Simeoner, who after graduating WNCC in 2017, went on to become founder and CEO of a tech company currently worth $10 million. And I am a Purple Heart recipient. I'm the CEO of a $10 million company, but most of all, I'm a WNCC alum, and that means a lot to me. I didn't walk into WNCC and have anybody say, you know what, that guy, he's a tech millionaire. That didn't happen. That wasn't the case. But WNCC taught me a lot of things. It taught me that teachers can care. The small class sizes make a big difference, and that community is everything. And so I thank you all for being a part of that community. Each year, more than 80 scholarships are offered through the WNCC Foundation, totaling more than half a million dollars. Well, that does it for us this time. Thank you so much for tuning in. Stay safe out there, and we'll see you here next time.